Good evening, everyone. Hey, hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Heidi and next to me is Foresta and this is Cocktails and Pajamas. So um, I'm just gonna go into it. Before we got on in the last few moments we were discussing, I was asking her, do we still need to introduce ourselves? <laughs> and and she was like, yeah, let's let's at least think that there might be someone new joining us. So if you are new, welcome. We love to have you. If you've been here before, welcome. We love having you. And um, tonight we are going to just kind of cover a couple of different topics, kind of what flows in the conversation as we always do. And then some topics with a little more intention. So the first thing that I wanted to share is that, you know, um, as I as I hunker into the holidays, one of the one of my favorite traditions to do is to listen to music, whether or not, and it doesn't necessarily have to be holiday music, but like more kind of like soulful, inward music that supports me to go inward, and. So I was listening to um, Sting had done a recording, a small little recording in a Pantheon, I think somewhere in France. And it was just he and his musicians and two background singers. And where he was sitting, there was this pendulum swinging back and forth in back of him. And it had this kind of very ethereal feel to it. And he sang some more familiar songs and some not some familiar, some newer things of his. And, and I found myself just feeling really, I felt like I had kind of levitated a little bit, maybe to this, definitely to this higher realm, if you will. It felt like a very spiritual experience with, for me. And I have a few artists that do that for me. He's one of them. Um, you too is one of them. Um, there are certain song intros that really kind of take me to another place. Certain instruments and the way that they're played take me to a certain place. Uh, Mazzy Star. Oh my God. Whew, she's, she's something. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there and just say how Right now, I'm feeling really very deeply connected to myself because of the gift of music that I took the time to listen to. And so, um, yeah, I think that's just kind of where I'm, where I'm coming from. Yeah. So, Miss Fedesta, are you ready to share a little bit? Oh, I just love that. Like, this excites me to be like, oh my gosh, Mazzy starts in my top 10 likely yeah i'd say top 10 if not maybe top 15 but if not top 10 like yeah. right there as, as it relates to creating an experience uh sonically and the i'm gonna say the music musicianship is also like artistry and musicianship sometimes yeah. you'll have one but not the other um <laughs> which is okay but there's something deeply alluring about that. So thanks for saying that, because I feel like even more closer to you, yeah. learning something new that's like, oh my God, me too. You know, that feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. For, I guess, hmm, feeling into like what to check in about, because there's so much swirling around in a good way in my life right now. I think the, the news of, I think this Monday, taking my exam to be a, a trained mentor at the relationship school. I was so cramming for the exam that I really hadn't, didn't think of how I would feel after. And I'm still riding that wave a little bit of like, wow, I get to teach the work I love, not just relationship skills and communication skills, but teaching coaches relationship coaches how to be better coaches like that is for the heart of a teacher like for me that is like such a win 
And I think it's such a win-win because they're going to get someone who loves mentoring um, and who loves nurturing. So that's really been a cause for celebration in my heart um, the last few days. Oh. So this thing I thought about, wanted, dreamed of, <clears throat> and then efforted towards coming to fruition. Um, like a harvest, you know, sometimes where you're like, wow, that really yielded some beautiful experiences and friendships and community um, as these coaches and training graduate this week. Yeah. So really celebratory week vibes for me. Oh. Uh, celebrating them too. I don't know if you've ever been emotionally invested in someone's growth and I'm sure you have because I know your big loving heart and to be like oh, the thing you've been efforting towards and having your highs and lows with is now coming yeah from your efforts and your devotion and your enthusiasm and and sometimes even just enduring right if it's a lot of work or a lot of studies or so yeah, self-celebration, but also like celebration for those I care about. Yeah, let's cha-ching to that. Ching. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So definite, uh, definite joy happening oh. amidst all of, all of other life, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I talked to you yesterday, maybe. Yesterday Possibly. morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we shared about some of the stuff that's been going on in our lives. Is there anything you want to be seen in? Anything that feels uh, yeah, important for you? Well, I think I, so this isn't something that came up yesterday, which it really doesn't matter. But I think I mentioned to you recently that going into 2022, one of my words and intentions is courage. Did I mention that? It sounds familiar, but I want to know more. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so I've been taking, they're not even baby steps. They're like the size of a mouse <laughs> steps. They're really little, but I've been taking these really tiny steps and I'm like, Oh, wow. And what, what I'm aware of is that in my subconscious, I'm feeling the energy of the word courage. And I'm like, wow. And I feel like I'm sitting up a little bit straighter when I do these things and having more and having more excitement around them as opposed to being scared. Like, oh, I'm gonna shift that energy a little bit. So I feel, so for me, I would say it's shifting the way that I adult right? Because I can't say that every day in life, I want to be an adult. I just, some days I just want to be like, no, <laughs> I'm going to stomp my feet. I'm going to have a tantrum and then maybe tomorrow. Right. But I'm like, no, I, I can do, I can do this and I can be, I can do it with grace and it might come across a little funky or a little crunchy, but I'm going to do the best that I can as I move through this. And so I wrote a really challenging email today. And um, I can't really say any more than that on the air, on the air. I love that. But I, I'm not going to say anything, you know, because I really don't know who listens to this. But I, um, I took my time with it. Like I actually created an outline and really wanted to be clear as far as what I was saying and, and, um, and made no apologies. I made, no, which is, which is new. Cause sometimes I can be like, I'm sorry, but I'm like, I am not apologizing here. Cause there, there's nothing to apologize for. So I'm not apologizing. I'm just going to state these things. And it was a, a kind of like a business, more like a, you know, kind of like a formal, there was a formality to it, a little more business-like email. 
And I'm like, just because I'm in this situation and this person's in this situation does not mean that I don't deserve to be respected, nor does it mean that I had anything to apologize for because I've not done anything wrong. So anyway, um, that felt like a big step. And I also was aware of this intention of courage. And I'm like, God, that's, wow, that's really shifting some things. So that feels really good to me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Whew. Yeah. I hear risk-taking. Yes. Um, emotionally risk-taking to some degree too, right? And like trustworthy, right? When we're honest, we're trustworthy. To ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, and most importantly, and then, yeah, hopefully like someone else goes, wow, that person really, you know, chose to do what could be hard, harder to do, to be honest here, to be transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love not apologizing for it because I'm going to hold huge generalization liability alert that women have a tendency, not all women, but a lot that I've, I've had experience with, to apologize for standing up for themselves. Yep. And whatever that, I mean, I know what that is in terms of social conditioning, but to lay that on the ground and say, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to be as direct as maybe a man is allowed to be, or even celebrated to be. And that's a huge hurdle yeah. for a lot of us women to let go of that apology. Yeah. Um, and, and that is, yeah, courage feels like the right word. So mm -hmm. thank you for, yeah. Thank you for going there in your life uh -huh. and then being able to share that here. Yeah. And whatever that ride was for you. Right. Because I'm sure there was a ride. <laughs> There's always a ride. <laughs> <laughs> always, there's always a little bit of consulting along the way, uh -huh. a little bit of support and, and then, and then doing it, putting it out. You just kind of like, okay, I'm going to birth. Cause it, you know, I'm like, I'm birthing something else right now. I've got to do it. I've, I have all my ducks in a row. Mostly I'm going to, I'm going to put it forth and, and yes, to the not apologizing, because I really want to encourage women before you say those words, I'm sorry, or I shouldn't, or this kind of behavior, check <laughs> yourself, check yourself and ask yourself, is that necessary? Do I need to, did I do anything that I need to apologize for? Really? Or, and, or ask yourself, if I was a male, would I be apologizing for this? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. We're yeah. allowed to take up space. Well, that's just it, right? It's it's it was something I think Glennon Doyle said, um, and I know how much you appreciate her work. And she was talking on some podcast with um, I think Jamie Kern Lena and was sharing like <clears throat> in her own home, you know, her her boys having like a sleepover and her daughter's having a sleepover and she goes into the room where her son and his friends are and says is anyone hungry and all the boys are staring at the tv don't look away and say yes like own it checking in with themselves expressing themselves and she said she went to her daughter's the room where the the girls were hanging out and that she asked the same question at first there was silence then there was eyes going off the TV and looking at each other to see if they were hungry on the inside by looking at each other. And then them being like, no, we're good, right? And just being like, that's early. Uh -huh. What I got from that was like, that's an early socialization. Mm -hmm. We're having to work. I'm not gonna say against, but we're gonna have to work with. Yeah. When we start setting boundaries. Right. And advocating for ourselves. Right. 
which is huge. I mean, we're talking even with the holiday season, like advocating for yourself, setting boundaries, right? So thank you for even bringing that, you know, you called it baby steps, but there's some colossal shifts in those steps. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hmm. I wow. know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm working with someone right now who is, this person's plate is very full. They work full time. They've got a couple of, you know, they're a couple of kids and a, and a husband and whatnot and a house and a lot of responsibility and trying to do it all. And, <clears throat> and forgetting about themselves forgetting about, oh, so I can have 10 minutes of quiet time today. I need to shower today. The burnt toast, uh. that analogy we've used a million times, right? So, okay, let me feed everyone else. This toast got a little burnt. I'm gonna eat it because that's what's there we can do better people like we deserve better we can do better and we do not i want to say this really loudly and clearly we do not have to do it all ourselves and let go of the perfection if you think that you can do it better than someone else that might be true let go of that because there's just too much right now going on in our lives as we're preparing for another big holiday, actually two, several back to back, right? And at the end of the year, this is at the end of the year, this is when kids have concerts. So we're trying to manage life and work and entertainment and part. Oh my God, my head wants to spin, right? Like I could like, no, delegate, delegate, ask favors. Yes. Make, make, do what you can to make your life easier for yourselves. Yeah. And this, this dovetails into something we were talking about with that frenetic energy at the end of the year and how <clears throat> everything seems to speed up because there is, like you said, <clears throat> Christmas choirs and graduation and travel and holiday shopping for those, you know, I'm not going to say just in the U.S., but those who celebrate Christmas and New Year. And, and then this idea that <clears throat> we might actually be wanting to slow down. You know, our primal animal that is still tethered to nature's cycles is likely gonna wanna have more naps and not have as much on the schedule and not be as social maybe. So, I sense an inner conflict for a lot of people <laughs> because there's expectations from society, from family, and yet their own inner compass might be asking for something else. Right. And how can you be kind to yourself there? Right. Like you said, maybe not be a perfectionist about the gifts or maybe have a shared agreement about one gift or, um, if you don't feel good around your family, maybe making other choices for the holidays. I don't know, like, I don't know what the answer is for people, but just recognizing if you're feeling anxious and tired and uh, a little frenetic and frazzled, there's a lot of components here, right. like you said, right? Yeah. And traveling on its own is its own thing right now. Right, and then adding to that, if there are um, unhealthy family dynamics, let's say, and you're supposed to be cheerful and go, and all you really wanna do is be a cat under a blanket and take care of yourself. So even just having a dialogue internally about like, or with a friend, it's like, there's these things, but I really want this and, and what's true for me. Uh -huh. I feel like that's a really important conversation to have. Uh -huh. What's true for me, regardless of what society is telling me I should be doing right now. Uh -huh. You know, take a step back would yeah. be my 
unsolicited advice. So take a step back and actually decide if this is what you want. Yeah. And really you don't have to party it up on New Year's. You don't have to, you know, be worried about every nephew and niece's presence. Like you could not be a perfectionist, you know. Let's right. like let what can be let go. Yeah. Do you have anything that do you want to add to that or anything that lands about like, I'm calling it the inner conflict, but it's outwardly expressed as frenetic energy to me. Yeah, um, I'm going to say this is at least 15, 16 years ago. And I was, I was involved in just a lot of extracurricular kinds of things. And so I think I had three or four holiday parties that I had been invited to. And I was singing in a church choir at the time. So we had all the holiday stuff, you know, that we were having events that we were doing plus Christmas Eve. Um, I mean, it was just so much. And I remember when the holidays were over, I was exhausted mm. and I didn't feel, I just didn't feel good. Like emotionally and spiritually, I didn't feel good. And I'm like, God, what, what happened? Like what happened? Mm -hmm. And, um, and the following year I said no to all the parties. I was like, nope, I'm not doing any party. Um, and things really shifted. Like when I made that, because I didn't feel like I had to go to any of the parties the year before, but I was just like, oh, I didn't FOMO. I didn't want to miss out. I had fear of missing out. I didn't want to miss out. Really? <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, I'm really glad that I made that decision. And then as the years went on, I let go of more and more and more. And then really got down to one or two things that I thoroughly loved doing that I wanted to continue to make a part of a tradition for myself. Mm -hmm. as someone who is single and just living her life um and I'm like this feels right and good to me yeah, yeah. Um, I think good feels like a good um it feels like a healthy metrics <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah because the other wasn't working and I knew that I didn't want to feel that way again Cause like I said, I was exhausted and I'm like, why am I so tired? Well, mm -hmm. I was trying to do all the things, all the things, all the things. Right. And we all know, like I, we, you know, we both have named a few, but we all know that around the holidays, there are so many events and things taking place mm -hmm. that let's not try to make them all fit in. Cause reality, mm -hmm. you've got to take time for yourself. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I actually made a pact with myself on Monday. Um, then this is me being boundaryed with myself because as you know, I'm enthusiastic and multi-passioned. And then I say yes to a lot of things. And then I'm just like my head's on a swivel. And I don't really like that energy. I think as a young person, I thrived on that. And I told you, you know, working on sets, working in political campaigns working at nonprofits, there was like the sense of urgency that can kind of make you an adrenaline junkie. And it doesn't feel good in my body anymore to be too much that way. I still love having multiple passions and multiple projects. Sure. Um, but in a way that feels like I can still be steady. And the pact I made was not to say yes to anything else in this month. Like my plan, my month is stacked as it is. Yeah. And to be like, can you flex your no muscle oh. just till January? I mean, right? Like <laughs> three ish, three and a half ish weeks or whatever. Can you just say, like, I'm actually full? Because I am. Like, it's basically saying, can you be in touch with reality? Oh, and actually be boundaried accordingly, if that makes sense. Because I could foresee myself wanting to say yes to three or four more things, which would create the squeeze that doesn't feel good. Yeah. 
for me. So just even just holding that, it's edgy for me because it's, what if I'm really excited about it? I'm still going to say no. And it's like, yeah, because you know what? You have to sleep and you have to meditate and you need to walk in nature. And if you don't get time to do those things, you're, you're fussy. And like, you're fussy with yourself and then with others and, you know. Yeah. So there's also this place of, I think we've named this before, like saying no, being not totally selfish. Yeah. Taking rest is not totally selfish. It isn't. It's necessary. Because, yeah, if we don't fill our cup, and I know what the times I've given from an empty cup, or I've, I'm running on fumes and still overgiving, um, that I get resentful. Yeah. And it's like, listen, you know your limit. Just don't go. <laughs> yeah. So I'm proud of that because I, I do want to do it all. And that can be my Achilles heel yeah. because you can't do it all at the same time. <laughs> and I know that that sounds sensical, but I actually have to say that out loud to myself to, to work with that part that's like, oh, and that, and that, you know. Yeah. And I guess a FOMO version of, like it won't come back around. Oh, okay, okay. When of course it will. Right. <laughs> there will be another songwriter circle. Yeah. There will be another opportunity. Um, so checking how it can look like I'm doing all these enthusiastic yeses, but it might be coming from a little scarcity. Uh -huh. And being like, you could actually feel abundant and say no. Instead of saying yes, because you're afraid it won't come back around. Like mm. it's a very different energy to operate from. Very different. Yeah. Because I often am like, if it's a hell yes, I'm doing it. Uh -huh. But that can be dangerous. Right. 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 And yeah. you've seen me in spells where it's like, oh, I said yes to too many things. And now I have to, if I want to be in integrity, complete them. And I'm stressed. <laughs> so I'm calling it san sanity. It feels sane. I think that's a great word for it. To take a pause. I mean, how many of us just take two weeks off? And again, I, I understand it's a privilege to do this, but to just be with, or like how you and Janice do these three-day retreats yeah. that collectively become all these days yeah. Of restoration and replenishment and integration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Such, there's so much value there. Yes. Yes. And we wouldn't have gotten there if we hadn't slowed down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's so funny that you... <laughs> that you brought this up, this kind of frenetic energy where you like to do everything because when we were, when we were messaging last week about Brene Brown's new book, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say? And you were like, <laughs> you were like book club. And I was like, okay, great idea and. <laughs> right. <laughs> And when do you want to start this club? Yeah. Because I'm the type of person who, yes, I get excited about something. And then I'm like, hang on. Mm -hmm. Do I actually have the time to commit to this? Because if, <laughs> if I don't have the time to commit to something, I won't commit to it. Because when I do commit to something, I'm in it 100%. I am fully committed. And I learned that from my parents, especially from my father. It was one of probably one of his greatest values that he passed on to all of his kids. Um, but because I've made the error where I've been like, oh, I have all, you know, I'm juggling all these balls. 
There are too many balls in the air and I'm trying to do it all. And guess what happens? They fall, they all fall on the floor because I don't have the time or the energy or the wherewithal to put forth what I want to put forth, which is everything. And I'm like, why did I do that? Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you. I'm so glad I have the filter, dad. Thank you, <laughs> dad, for, yeah, for, for that value, because um, it is, it's hard to say no to things that you're really excited about. Mm -hmm. And yet sometimes mm -hmm. it's going to, what's, it's going to be what saves us in the end. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I think too, you know, as it relates to the book club, when I pre-ordered it on my audible, it said February. So I was like, cool. But the book came out this week. It's just that the audible might come in later. So I was like, cool, we could do this as a, you know, a February book club Atlas of the heart, but all the emotions February and that whole, like at least commercial love month, you know, um, and then I was like, oh, it came out this week. Mm. I don't think I'm going to be able to start it anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> but that was my error. I was going, oh, look, okay, you know. Yeah. And yeah, it's a place I am being invited to mature. Oh. Right? So it's not the... 13 year old saying yes without executive function and consequences and uh, fine, like now I've got to squeeze this in somewhere. Yeah. Which doesn't allow for 100%. It doesn't. I it think doesn't. I've also maybe gotten used to doing so many things I love, but it feeling a little bit like drinking out of a fire hose. Right. Say more. Like there's more than I could actually take in and integrate and digest because there's too many things I'm doing. Um, and that's one approach because sometimes that just makes me a great generalist at a couple of things that I'm mildly curious about. Uh -huh. And for the things I want to build craft with, right? Like the, the time is important. The time commitment and focus is important. Uh -huh. So yeah, I'm curious if it'll help our audience in case they're in FOMO in case they just put a lot of pressure on themselves at the end of the year yeah. to get it all done as though like I get that weird place in me that's like oh, all the things I put on my to-do list I'm gonna finish these on it's like no no January 1st will come and things will get moved to January 1st right. like relax right um yeah and what can you say no to if it's really a no for you yeah it's like, where can you be congruent with yourself? Uh -huh. And the check-ins feel important. Like, is this something I want to do? Or am I doing this to please others? Or am I doing this because it's a habit? Right. Mm. Big deal. Yeah. Mm. So I'm curious how you would go about letting go of... Like what, what would be your strategy in letting go of things that you had said yes to or were thinking about saying yes to because of FOMO? How mm -hmm. would you go about differentiating? Okay, so this I feel strongly, I'm gonna, this is a strong yes. This is a meh, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how, what your strategy might be to kind of like whittle down. Mm -hmm what is important? Yeah, it's interesting because I think I have a lot of hell yeses. Wow. So my work is more in like casing the passions I have mm -hmm. being like, okay, I hear a hell yes that you want to do a photography exhibit at the local coffee shop. But could that be next year or next, next year? <laughs> Those are the kind of conversations I'm having with myself. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like when I started couples coaching training in, in September, I was like, I want to make a record. I'm like, do we have time to make a record right now? Cause that takes some real focus and thought and musicianship and creativity. And I was like, no, let's make a record next spring. 
So I'm normally having to tend to like the hell yeses, all of those children uh -huh. wanting attention now. It's kind of how my brain works. And to answer your question, I think if it's not a hell yes, I generally just drop it. Like if it's a, mm, 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 like that doesn't feel, I know what it feels like when I'm like, oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and so if it's not that, I trust that I should decline. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Is there, do you have a different ratio? Is it all like, I'm just like the little, yes, 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 yes. Now, like, what do I do? Cause I have to sleep and stuff. You know? Do you I'm have, or you have you have to differentiate, is this really a yes for me? Yeah, but I mean, I'm also not like, I don't have a lot of FOMO. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that comes with age maturity, I do. I think it does. And so, but if I have, you know, if I have like four or five things where I'm like, oh God, I would love to do that. And I can't do all of it, I would make a list. Mm. And I would just prioritize, what do I really want to do? And, and the other, so not only what do I really want to do, so prioritize, but also I'm going to pick two out of those five things. If I get to three, four, and five, okay, but I really want to do the one, two. Yeah. 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 And, and oftentimes the other thing too is, there's a, there's a, the word that's coming up for me is uh, satisfaction. Like, well, I feel satisfied only doing two out of these five things. Let me sit with that for a moment. Mm. And I really do feel into, I mean, you know, I, I, as you know, I mean, I use my intuition all the time and I really do tap into my intuition and ask that question. Like, how does it feel in my body? Because if it's just like, meh, I can, I, you're going to, it'll come, it'll come around next year. Right? Like it'll, it'll show up again. Um, and then there are things that I don't want to wait for. So I do, I do uh, use my intuition and kind of go inward and where I feel strongly and where I don't feel strongly. And that's kind of how I differentiate. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm loving that. I'm also thinking about sometimes there is a push, right? I'm thinking of when I wanted to switch careers from finance to coaching, what that looked like at the time with the school was taking the deeper psychology of intimate relationships as one certification of interpersonal psychology is nine months. And then taking the summer off and then having another nine month program that teaches you how to coach people to be more interpersonally intelligent once you've done the work yourself, right? And I remember saying to my teacher, like, no, I need to do these together because I can't wait two years to change careers. Like, can I do these together? Which was a little insane at the time. Nobody was doing that. It wasn't. <laughs> how the school operated. Um, but I was like, this I'm willing to do knowing I'm gonna be spending hours doing homework in the evenings oh. and maybe on my weekends and pulling a, you know, working full-time while learning part-time muscle because I wanna forward and further my life sooner. So there I hold a conscious choice which is like, this is going to be a push, but this push means, you know, moving towards your dreams at an accelerated speed, I guess. Uh -huh. So there's that one place where it's like, it actually serves me uh -huh. um, and could look to someone else like a little bit of madness. Yeah. <laughs> and then I heard this term JOMO. Joy of getting out. Yes. And I remember this was um, 
probably getting into like my late twenties, early thirties, and you know, it's the sunset strip and you're in a rock band and <clears throat> you always see a lot of music and our weekends were at those clubs. I'd gotten to the point where like a band I liked, it was probably the 12th time I'd be seeing them. And it was a coldish night and I don't know, whatever was happening, I just wanted to be like blanket, nest, twinkle lights alone. And it was the first time I was like, no, I think I'm gonna, which like to stay home in your twenties when you've been invited out, it's like blasphemous somehow, right? Yeah. And I went, yeah, I think I wanna stay home. <clears throat> and it was the, I felt, I'm gonna say a liberation to be like, I know exactly what it's like down there. It's only, it was 15 minutes from Laurel Canyon. Like, I know that they're drinking. I know they're watching the band. I know the set list. I know everyone's gonna go to the other place afterwards to have, you know, a meal. And then it's like gonna be the 2 a.m. cold in the parking lot stuff. And I actually felt joy that I was missing out. I love that. Yeah. And I was okay with it. And it was, it was just a, a big enough window and portal for me to start realizing that was a thing. Oh. It could be like, I'm not missing anything actually. Right. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think it comes with maturity, age, and you know, eventually when you've seen that band 12 times, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, I'm like is there anyone that I would want to see 12 times they'd have to they'd really have to knock my socks off yeah you know yeah oh. yeah so important thank you for letting us lead, you know bring the conversation to oh. uh -huh. this place as the holidays come up on people and <clears throat> just check where you feel obligated and check where you are really a no. Yeah. And know what your no is. Because mm. mm -hmm. we say yes to a lot of things, which is we both just talked about, isn't necessarily um, doable. Yeah. Um, but if we're really clear about what our no is, it might be a little bit if, easier to differentiate and to knock it out mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm. yeah mm. and if I you have okay. kids you know and if you have kids because kids are going to get invited to various things at well as well because yeah. you know besides you know besides the holiday mm -hmm. concerts and whatnot kids are going to be invited to a party or a girl scout event or i mean they're just a million holiday yeah. things going on allow your children like if they've been invited to three things allow your children to go to one say out of these three three things and have it like do it as a family because there can be some real learning here yeah um to how to prioritize um and i, I mean I, i'm thinking there's just a lot to be learn from here in this, in, in a situation like this. Yeah, I love that sort of modeling it, not in a stern, rigid way, but being like, do you really want to go to Susie's party? Or do you feel like you have to? Or like, which one's most exciting to you? You know, kids can, can name that. They so can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to give a shout out because my backdrop, this, is actually a place that uh, one of my high school friends has dolled up. I think it's in the Carolinas, maybe North Carolina, Nick Matthews, gussied up what I imagine is somewhere in his backyard and then does like family photographs. So you get this oh, whole vibe. Beautiful. You get this whole gorgeous vibe. And I swear to God, if I was anywhere near North Carolina, I would totally do a holiday yeah. photo shoot. Yeah because it's just so breathtaking. So I wanna give a shout out because I thought, what a creative way for a photographer yeah. to, to invite you to like, come, it's all been built, come enjoy having some photos here. Yeah, um, so yeah. I just love the ingenuity of that as well. So.
Yeah. Shout out. Yeah, and I think we're close. I think we still have a little time, but we're close to our. We are close to the end. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So as we as we finish up, is there anything that you wanted to bring in or add to what we've talked about this evening? Yeah. The word that's been coming up for me is celebration. So in the midst of all the human to-dos, and I know there are many, right? And what for many are going to be the next coming weeks of shopping or traveling or whatever finding time for celebration, however small, right? I mean, Richard and I, when I did my exam on Zoom, you know, it was an oral exam for an hour on Zoom, had a little toast, sat on the couch in the twinkle lights. I mean, we both had other work to do, so maybe five, 10 minutes, but we took the time to celebrate. Instead of it being one more thing that's checked off and on to the next. Right. A real exhale, a real joy-filled celebration it doesn't have to be extravagant. I think many times people might think, oh, it's got to be like the fancy restaurant or we've got to make the reservation or like, and it's like, no, it could be clinking two glasses with a little bit of, you know, good bourbon uh -huh. being like, oh, you did it. Right. So that for me feels important. Like bring the joy. Yeah. Bring the celebration. Honor the people in your life who have either had accomplishments or simply have accomplished getting through this year. Yes. Like, let's be real. Yes. It doesn't have to be a certificate or a graduation or a job promotion. It could be simply like high five. Yeah. We're making it to 2022. Yeah. And like, I see your strength, you know? I mean, I think of you and our time circling this way since the pandemic or just about since the pandemic and seeing your strength and your courage and your resilience and your ability to feel the pain and still have hopefulness and still be a contribution. Like that's worth celebrating to me. Oh, uh, you know, you. yeah, it is. Uh, it is watching you grow and try new things and communicate hard things, and um, even like celebrating your birthday with you, and like, wow, this is pretty awesome that we get to do this, yeah, and we get to have. Yeah, I'm gonna call it like the celebrations that are like super ordinary, but uh -huh. but they're not ordinary. They're not ordinary. And I do think it's important to actually, when we complete something, to stop and take a moment and say, wow, I just, even if it's only with yourself, I just finished that task. I finished shopping for, 85, hopefully it's not 85 people, but <laughs> it, it might can, feel like that. It might feel like 85 people, but oh my God, I just finished that huge task or I just completed that email and I sent it. The one that I didn't want to do, I did it. Um, there are just so many things that instead of rushing to the next thing that we need to feel like we need to check off our list, stop for a moment, like Fidesta said, you don't necessarily have to raise a glass, but at least thank yourself. Take a moment, and say, yeah, I'm I'm gonna pat myself on the back a little bit and say, add a girl, you know, I I did this. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's just not like adulting is not easy. Life is not easy. And so if we can get things finished and to completion, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's like give yourself credit it's an act of self-love and is. give yourself credit when you start something you've been procrastinating on absolutely all of it all of right? it all the of it the kind of boundaries I have to have to have one tab open when I gotta get something done and be like nope <laughs> those other esoteric tabs are gonna have to wait like 
that can be your cookie later. Right. But we can't look into, you know, right. how Cleopatra surveyed the Nile and figured out whether there'd be droughts or not. Like, chill. Right. You got to finish the spreadsheet. Like, yeah. that's sometimes the work. Yeah. But when I even just start the thing that I've been procrastinating over, I give myself some credit. Yes. You know? Be like, ooh, this is hard because this one seems daunting, so you don't want to start it. Uh-huh. But you're five minutes in, like, good job. Uh-huh. And then you're six minutes in. And then you're seven minutes in. And mm-hmm. then you're more and more and more further into the project. Yes, and which means the further you're into the project, the closer you are to the end. And it's less daunting. And it's less daunting. And in, as much as you can enjoy the project while you're in it, enjoy it. If it's not, you know, it's not gonna kill you, enjoy the project as much as you can. <laughs> Bring the joy. Absolutely. Bring the joy. Bring the joy. Joy. What about you, my friend? Anything else that feels like a closing? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I do have a chat pack question. It's yes, it's a fun one. Okay. What is what is the biggest mishap that you've that has ever happened to you? on a trip (laughs) okay (laughs) so i'll say first thought best thought um so it was i want to say our anniversary or my birthday but like an important day okay and my ex-husband and i had taken this road trip he had planned a hot air balloon ride Oh, as part of this, like we were going somewhere, I don't know. And so they were a little short of staff. I'll say it that way (laughs) to begin. (laughs) And so we get into this basket with this other couple. And that was the whole like sunset couples on our balloon ride for like an hour and a half or two hours or something. And you're literally in a basket. I know. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I had never done this before. And they were having trouble getting, however, the heat maneuvers to get the, the, the balloon going and notice that something was off with one of the ropes. I don't know, because it happened too fast. This was in my early 20s. But my husband at the time jumped down to help release a rope, okay? (laughs) (laughs) And to his credit, he did the right thing, except then our balloon went up without him. Yeah. And so I was crying in the corner of this basket while the other couple was having a romantical time with their champagne and their sunset and their kisses oh. and their snuggles. And me and like the pilot, I don't know what you call a hot air balloon pilot, but I would call him a pilot. And me crying in the corner into my champagne. I mean, and not the end of the world, right? I'm looking back 20 years later, not a big yeah. deal. Yeah. <laughs> and my husband's in a truck following the hot air balloon oh my goodness <laughs> to its landing place an hour and a half later or whatever and okay I got past the crying I was like okay let me just it was a beautiful view and I love elevation sure. so baskets feel a little sketchy to me um and so we came for the down for the landing but kind of fast and low enough that we hit the top branches of a tree and tipped over. Oh my goodness. So it was like a basket tumble situation. Okay. And then just kind of being like in the dirt, like in California, San Diego, like dry, dusty desert oh. dirt. Oh. oh. And then my husband running from the truck. <laughs> and I was just like, Man, I'm not cool. <laughs> 
taking a significant tumble once we hit that tree. Yeah. So being a little banged up and just, just, I thought I had gotten beat up in an alleyway. I was just so. Oh my goodness. This, this allostatic load, the stress. <laughs> and he felt terrible and they gave us a refund, but I don't know if that was enough. <laughs> we probably needed massages and some sedatives, but. <laughs> that, oh my. That was a mishap of. I'd say so. Pretty high order at the time. Yeah. Wow. And I have not been on a hot air balloon since. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't you didn't revoke the the coupon for like the replace you didn't. <laughs> no, they just gave him a refund and we were like, okay, let's that she'll never be talked oh, to. <laughs> oh, what about you? Have you had any mishaps? I, I have, I have. So I was 16. I was a junior in high school going into my senior year or summer. And my father, bar my parents borrowed an RV from family friends. And we drove to Yellowstone. We drove cross country to Yellowstone. And before we left, my father was like, all right, each of us is going to have a job in the RV, like to take care of whatever, right? I get stuck with the sewage. So I don't know if you know anything about camping in a camper and sewage. It's a whole thing. And I was learning on the fly because I didn't. I didn't know that we'd never been, we'd never done this. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> so there's a hose that runs, a hose that runs from the, from the RV to it and a campground to a hole in the ground. That's where the sewage and you empty it every mm -hmm. not like, right. Okay. This is early in the trip because Heidi doesn't really know what she's doing. How old were you? 16, I, I think okay. I'm- Yeah, you said that's like a teenager. 15, yeah. 15, yeah. And the I think it was like the first, <laughs> even, I couldn't believe how early in the trip this was. It was like the first or second day. And I had not screwed the hose on oh. tight enough to the camper. And it went, the hose, went down the chute in the ground. So all the shit literally <laughs> poured out. And I was like, oh my God, it was, it was awful. It was just awful. Mm -hmm. And so the rest of the trip, my father was, he, he was like hovering. He was like a helicopter hovering, making sure because he's like, we are not going to have our shit all over. <laughs> I hear you. I get it, Dad. He's like, no, seriously, we're not gonna let that happen again. But yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> and it was probably one of the most memorable vacations we took. I'd ever. say we just it. We had so many mishaps with just. It was so much fun. We laughed so hard, and I was like, how? It was like it was like out of National Lampoon or something. It was it was a lot of fun. We had a really good oh time. Oh my gosh, that's the image I got. I was like Chevy Chase and yes. all of that. <laughs> yes, totally. And I love that you can, you know, similar to how I feel about it, like be able to laugh and tell oh a story. Oh my god! Yes. About it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's it's given me a, like when people are like, "Oh, look at those hot air balloons. Have you ever been in one?" I'm like, "Why yes." <laughs> and <laughs> like the <laughs> amount. <laughs> the amount of laughter oh my god from that you know what seems like such an awful moment yeah and again like that long scale right of it can seem really bad in the moment and you right. look back and go okay that, that was interesting right mm. oh god yeah <laughs> thank you for that i love the the joyful laughter of the chat pack oh <laughs> Thank goodness for the chat pack. Yes. Mm, I feel like it, I feel like it, you know, it levels things. 
Yeah, because sometimes we go to places that might feel really complex or rich or heavy, yeah. you know, using words that might suffice, they might not, but, and then to just be able to laugh wholeheartedly and yeah, yeah it's yeah. very balancing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm. You're welcome. Thank you, my friend, for doing this with me, doing it together, creating this podcast. And thank you to our audience for watching. If you want to reach out, if there's a question or a comment that you have, we're on Facebook, put it in there and, um, and we'll respond. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. We hope you receive some support and some, um, yeah, just some, some support and, and some encouragement. How long and, nourishment. Your path. and nourishment. Because we could all use a little nourishment. Thank all right. You. Thanks.